Hello guys, Oris Zub here reporting from Lviv, Ukraine and I committed to do the daily reportings and I'm super grateful that you are following my story without hot topics, without some false headlines, just the real, pure, local perspective of what is happening in Ukraine and Sensu Stricto currently in Lviv. As you can see at the moment, the situation looks pretty much normal. Yes, if you would think of when somebody comes inside and they find themselves in this beautiful, beautiful square, they would not even imagine that our country is at war at the moment. At the moment, stay for a while and appreciate this, this square. You see the architecture around really looks like something in Vienna. And the truth, guys, is that all this section of Lviv was developed during the Austrian times, which really resembled typical, typical Central European city. So the heritage, the culture we have now is very, very European. Yeah, guys, please don't let us down. Uh, we feel internally much more uh, mentally connected with you as opposed to the uh, the Russians and uh, it doesn't matter what Putin tells that Ukrainian nation doesn't exist here we are and now I see a huge support from you definitely we need to keep pushing forward in order to receive much much more like this is the crucial moment not only in the history of Ukraine guys but also in the history of entire human civilization city is busy pharmacies are working some shops are not but the coffee shop is working marta how is the coffee it's good it's but good it, but it was funny because i ordered uh decaf <laughs> because i already had too much coffee but i still want some flavor at least but not coffee because uh, you know everybody is so stressful and adrenaline is pumping uh but the tradition of drinking coffee in lviv is still here <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't go anywhere and mm -hmm. for your consideration guys, just for you to know that Yuri Kulchitsky, native to Lviv, introduced coffee culture to Central Europe. It was the time when Turkish, the Ottoman army, took Vienna under siege in the 17th century and once the Polish troops with the head of Jan III Subeski, together with the support of Ukrainian Cossacks, pushed them back. He was asked, like one of the leaders of Cossacks, he was asked, okay, like, what do you want for your heroic uh, step? Yes, and he told me, don't give me lands, don't give me gold, just give me all the coffee remained from the Turkish camp. Everybody thought he's silly. <laughs> However, Yuri Kuczycki, since he was imprisoned in Turkey before, he knew that the coffee is not some kind of <laughs> unnecessary thing. This can be used for the good profit in, in Europe. And one of the central streets in Vienna is named after his name. Okay, lovely. I have to go the other direction. Where are you heading now? Uh, I'm going to the gallery. Uh, I will meet uh, my colleagues, galleries, and we will think how can, what can we do in, um, in this war in terms of uh, art and culture? How can we spread the word? about the situation and maybe communicate with our colleagues all around the world because yes because basically basically art is uh, um second diplomacy you see okay see you very soon stay safe the world is watching us there are many much more reporters coming and uh, trying to get insiders information so i will not disturb this man but very important statue just behind him this is Mikhailo Grushevsky statue. Ukraine was not established as the independent state first time in 1991. The first independence of Ukraine happened just after the fall of the uh, World War I. Uh, Ukrainian National Republic proclaimed independence. Together they were united with the Western National uh, Republic with the center in Lviv. And it was the first time when Ukraine was mapped uh, in the world 
uh, with a kind of similar borders to those that uh, we have in our country. So the history of, of our uh, country, yes, it goes way, way further in, in the earlier times than you might imagine. And Mikhail Groshevsky is the first president of independent Ukraine, which was proclaimed in 1918. So don't trust what Putin is saying that this nation doesn't exist. It was never independent. We have a long history, many traditions. And as, as many of you know, Ukrainians are super, super nice people. We never initiated an aggressive war. The city looks much more busy comparing to what you might have seen in my first video. Yes, it was the first day of the invasion. It was very, very quiet. However, nowadays you can see people are walking. There are some kids with them. Station looks relatively calm. There, in the end of, of the avenue, is our amazing opera house, which is one of the most beautiful uh, art deco buildings in the entire Europe. Yesterday I was able to get some cash from the ATM, which was a good sign, definitely. And our head of uh, National Bank assured that the financial institutions should work properly. But you know, sometimes people tell that, in Ukraine especially, uh, that this can be like some calm before the real storm. Hopefully, such storm as now is happening in Kiev, in Kharkiv, in Odessa, and in other parts of eastern Ukraine would not reach Lviv. Uh, we really hope for that. And at the same time, we are receiving many, many guys, refugees. One of the most important things in such situation is not to panic, which actually happened on the first day of the attack. However, now people are getting much more organized. Uh, our transport, as you can see, is operating without any disruptions. And uh, all the uh, functions of the city are operating well, uh, which uh, makes people feeling much more comfortable. And which also shows to other uh, Ukrainians all around the country that Lviv remained safe. If you've seen any kind of information that there have been bombings in Lviv, I can confirm that according to 27th of February, there were no bombings in the city. Hopefully they will not arrive here as well. As you can see guys, it's lively. It's very lively still here. Nice to see people are doing some shopping. The shopping mall is operating well. And next to it, there is a open air traditional market, which is also open. So those are good, good signs and good news. All of the refugees definitely are fleeing west. Many of them remain in Lviv. Many of them get distributed in the surrounding villages. And of course, many people just try to reach the border with the European Union, which is less than one hour drive, provided there is no traffic to the west uh, from Lviv. So in this video, I'm going to show you how local citizens of Lviv cooperate, how they uh, help our other brothers and sisters from more eastern parts of Ukraine and which type of shelter do they provide for their guests. Stay with me, please. Hello, hello. Welcome. Where are we, Marta? We are in a gallery uh, in Lviv, my city. The name of the gallery is Ya Gallery. And uh, right now here is uh, like, a, I would say like a small refuge for people who came from Kyiv, for example, or from uh, east, from, uh, east of Ukraine. And also with the other galleries, we are, we are working on a plan. Uh, how, what can we do in terms of culture and art? to provide this uh, this um, cultural diplomacy and to talk to other cultural institu institutions all around the world uh, for them to support us with the war uh, with Russia, right? With the aggression. So can um, you give us a tour here? Yes. Uh, that's the hello. owner of the gallery. Hello. Hello, hello. I'm Pavla Gudimov. Nice to meet you. We work uh, with a petition to communicate about the uh, uh, culture against the culture propagands. Mm -hmm. I would like to add that Pavlo is one of the co-founders of one of the most prominent Ukrainian rock bands, Okean Elze. Yes. And uh, he was playing the guitar. Yes. 
and I'm like a super cool fan, so it's like it's a great honor to be here and uh, know uh, Pavlo personally. But also, Pavlo, as I said, you own this gallery, you are an architect, and you have some other uh, things to do. Can you give us a tour in the gallery, yeah, please? Okay, it's us, friends. Uh, you look uh, to the wall, the exhibition uh, of Yevgen Lysik. It's a very most famous artist who worked in Lviv Opera, like a general artist. Okay, let's go. Uh, today it's like a refugee. You look, uh, the bats, the bats, the dog, it's Michael. Yeah, dog? Refugee? Yeah, it's, like, it's a refugee. It's my friend from Kiev, Artem. Yes. Uh, Artem? Artem with family living here. Uh, in the first day of the war, Artem, my wife and my daughter coming to Lviv. It's a very hard road, to, but many cars and many problems and bombing uh, on the road. Okay, to the next room. Oh, it's a great space. Yes, it's great space. It's Katya. Uh, he uh, works in the Yacht Design Group like, like a general manager. It's a nice space, yes. Uh, uh, you look at uh, so beds. It's beds who uh, are sleeping. Uh, our friends uh, from Suwe. Uh, and uh, this is the old building, 1905. It started to build, yes, the Secession, mm -hmm. modern yeah, style. Uh, it's room. Uh, of exhibition of Yevgen Lysik have a name, the war. The, the war, war. It's about the war, yes. Uh, it's war from 60s. And sorry, I don't know why this work today is like contemporary art. It's, it's actual situation. Uh, the man uh, like a shelter of the children. Yeah, it's about Ukraine today. We talk about lonely thing we talk about the, the two brothers uh one brother killed one another brother brother it's like um, yeah. the bible is sin and, and somebody is like really sad over it's, here it's, it's really sad it's a, it, a situation really sad and all these things it's really refugees mm. So you see, you have the exhibition of refugees and now you are turning your gallery into a refugee camp. Yes, like really big premises over here. Uh, do you expect more people to come yeah. here? How many people do you plan to accommodate here? Uh, 12 people accommodate here. And uh, we uh, so, uh, rotate, we have, we have rotation. Mm -hmm. many, many people after the yeah, gallery come into the Carpathian Mountains, to the Uzhgorod. Uh, we every day, we uh, have a meeting with mm -hmm. cultural people who yeah, also like the refugees coming to Lviv, and we help it, help it to the beds, the uh, eating, and we have also very interesting space uh, in the basement. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like uh, like shelter. Wow, that's a that's a really amazing story that you can see that now people from different industries from different background are doing everything in order to participate in in the sad uh, page in the history of ukraine however uh, you know as my wife told that the art is the second diplomacy really it can be influential and the guys at the moment are hard working uh, to do the petitions to uh, to give some statements to the international art community uh, what they can do in order to prevent the further escalation of the events happening uh, with us now. So guys, if you work in art or if you are related to the creative industries in any way, please contact uh, Pavlo, please contact my wife Marta. All their links I provide below in this video. 
uh, ask them how can you cooperate, how can you do something together on the level uh, of artists. I'm sure when all of this mess is finished, you will be creating some amazing art projects together. Evacuation, evacuation, that's how it looks. We just heard the alarm and we go from the art gallery inside to the basement. I would say it's a pretty cool, pretty cool shelter. Yes. The real uh, basement of the art gallery serves amazing for the shelter. People are coming, as you can see. And uh, Marta, it's much more comfortable than ours. Of course. We should improve. We should have our own gallery. <laughs> we will have this nice, you know, basement. I'm sorry. I well, that was pretty sarcastic end of that video, but this is guys the reality in which most of Ukrainians live in the moment. And this is Lviv, this is not even other cities in the east like Kyiv, Kharkiv, Odessa and the surroundings, which I believe is probably much, much worse. So we are really looking forward to your support, please uh, don't keep silence, tell your governments to push, to interfere. Ukraine is now standing at the gate of our human civilization. And if you want to support our team directly, which is not really easy under such circumstances, please follow the link below this video and there you'll see a few different options how you can support us. And that's it for me uh, for now. Uh, I'm really looking forward to see you tomorrow uh, because uh, things are developing really fast here and uh, my goal is to be your guide into the situation in Ukraine. Also, please subscribe to other my channels like Instagram and Facebook. You'll find the links below as well. And if you feel like writing to me, please don't hesitate. Uh, I try to answer everybody permitting the situation. Hope to hear from you. Keep up, keep safe and see you very soon.